Kalala Yahweh, by Shimmy Yahweh Shai, by Shimmy Kakadash, Brakata Yahweh, Brakata Yahweh Shai Mashiach, Brakata Yasharala, Brakata Yahweh, Halawaya, Halawaya, Shalom, Shalom, double honor to the Apostle and Elders of Great Millstone, pushing and teaching this truth and sincerity, and overseeing the construction of the tabernacle of David, a more perfect tabernacle. Shalom to the Akiyam, while Bafiyam scattered abroad. Shalom to the still believers. This is Yahweh Sop, by Yasharala, by Yahweh, coming to you live through the Spirit and Power Yahweh, by Shimmy Yahweh Shai, by Shimmy Kakadash. Give you another quick lesson, quick edifying video. Hopefully, it's edifying. But, um, I guess the basic concept of this video is just gonna be, um, straight and narrow. You know what I'm saying? Be on, be on a straight and narrow, fly the straight and narrow. And this is Matthew chapter 7, verse, um, 13. It says, Enter, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, it's like it, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto light, and few there be that find it. Verse 15 Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. So I'm gonna I'm I'm break that down real quick. Um, what the Amashiach Yahweh Shah, who the word in him calls Jesus Christ, what he's saying is, um, to enter in the kingdom of heaven in order to receive uh, salvation, eternal salvation, you gotta you gotta enter into the straight path, and that word straight goes back to um, a level of difficulty, because walking in this truth, being um, being a real Christian, and all the word Christian means is, is a follower of the Hamashiach. Being a real Christian is is is, is difficult. Is this path is difficult? We go through um, the Akiyam of the Most High God. The service of the Most High God, we go through a lot, man. We go through a whole bunch of perse persecution. We go through um, persecution through our family, persecution from the world, being labeled as a hate group, being labeled as racist, being labeled as anti-Semitic, being labeled as all these proverbs and proverbs and bywords for pushing the, the for pushing the truth of the Lord to our people who are in desperate need of it. <laughs> and the, the, um, the Bible says, "You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free." You know what I'm saying? And a lot of brothers are set free through this truth because when we take off of that that Christian yoke of iron and that Christian um, concept, we take it off, and we're able to see the Bible, the 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 holy scriptures for what they really are, our 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 heritage and our culture. And it says, um, "And see ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat." I want you to understand that the Hamashiach is describing. The, the broad way as the the road to destruction. He's saying and he says there's many that go in there out. So what does that imply? That there's there's a lesser amount of people that are going through the straight and narrow. But more people are going through the broad. And what does that look like in today's aspect? It looks like Muslim. It looks like Christianity, the the multi ethnic church. That's those are broad avenues in, into this thing. Because one, um I think Right now, um, Chris, the 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 enterprise, <laughs> the enterprise of Christianity is a billion dollar industry. Not only that, um, I think worldwide there are billions, uh, billions upon trillions of, of Christians, and that that brings me to a scripture, Matthew twenty four, Matthew twenty four verse um, fourteen. Which is one of my favorite scriptures, and it's a, a very important to me because I hear a lot of people mess the scripture up. This is Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. It says, And this, and this, not and the, and this, meaning it's a specific, a certain, a, 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 a distinguishing type. It says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto the nations, and then shall the end come. Not in the gospel, in this gospel. Talking about the truth of this Bible. Not talking about Christianity. Because if Christianity was the answer, the end would have been can. Christianity has been running rapid on this earth for almost a thousand years. Probably, most likely 800, but as, if you round it up, it's almost a thousand years. Christianity. Muslim. Been running rampant on this earth for a very long time. Buddhism. Zoroastrianism. Egyptology. Comedic studies, so on and so forth. If that was really the truth, the way, 
the end where the man came. Because that's according to, this is out of the words of the Mashiach. And he's, he's, he, he's not a man that he should lie. And, more, and moreover, his earthly ministry, he was saying the things that the Heavenly Father was giving him to say. So this is thus saith the Lord. That in this, and this gospel, and this gospel, not in the gospel, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. And that's very that's very important because now we're 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 the last ones on the scene. The, the Hebrew Israelites, we're the last ones on the scene, and look at and look at how the world is going. We're the last ones on the scene, and look at how the world is going. So going back to Matthew chapter seven, it says um, Matthew chapter seven verse thirteen: Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Tell them. Like I just said, Christianity is a very broad, very broad, broad religion. You got all all nationalities of, of people are Christians. The gospel, the gospel of Christianity has been preached to the, to the, to the, to all the nations, but not this gospel. The truth, the truth of the Bible, that the so-called African Americans, so-called Hispanics, and so-called Native Americans, or the Hebrew Israelites, according to the various twelve tribes. And that we are the sons of the living God, or we are the sons of the living power, that gospel has not been preached to the whole, to to all the nations. But it is it's it's going there, and you see what's happening. Uh, what's the saying? Everything's going to hell in the handbasket, and that's exactly what's happening. And it goes on the same verse fifteen. It says, "Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, and inwardly they are raving wolves." Because that's all these pastors are, especially these pastors of these mega churches. That's all. They all. The only thing they want to do is they want your money. They want your money. They want you to, to build up their fortune. They want you to get um buy them these mansions. They want you to build uh buy them these mega churches. They want you to go tell your friends to come to their church so they can get their money. That's all they're trying to do. Raven wolves, hungry, howling. They that's what they be they be on, on, on the pool in the pulpit howling. Speaking in tongues. All that all that stuff. Putting on a, a, a grandiose show. And going for, going on, Matthew chapter seven verse um Matthew chapter seven verse twenty four. Therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Now wait, I'm, let me go back. It says, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, that means following what, what the Hamashiach said. He said, whoever follows what I said, whoever hears and follows what I said, I will liken him to a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And peep this. And the rain descended, the perils, the end time prophecies, the, the tribulations, the, the 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 everything and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it's found upon a rock. What is it what is what is that rock? The truth. Which we are founded on the truth. The true men of the Lord are founded on his truth and we're standing steadfastly and firmly. I'm going back it says and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not. So all these perils, all these tribulations, all these natural disasters, all these, anything you're going to throw at the men of the Lord, we're going to withstand that, because we're built upon a rock, that's the truth, and ultimately that rock is Yahweh Shai, Amashiach, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Ka'ala, Ka'ala, Yahweh Yah, Yahweh Yah, and it says, going on, in 26, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. What does that mean? You built you built your house on all these these false philosophies. You built you built your house on all these all this trust in the so-called white man, whose really whose real um nationality biblical nationality goes back to Esau, Edom, Idumia, Amalek. You you built you put your trust in him instead of the, the living power. So you built your house on sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell. Just like America's gonna fall, cause it's built on sand. It's built on false ideologies. It's built on, it's been on perversion, perversion of the scripture. So it's gonna fall all through the spirit and power. Yahweh by Shimei Shai. And you and anybody who sees this video, you need to begin your house in order right now. Make no tearing to turn.
This is Ecclesiasticus chapter 5, verse 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and by in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. Because he's coming in the thief like a thief in the night. He's coming like a thief in the night. It's not gonna be pretty, man. It's not. It said the Bible says the slain, the slain of the Lord shall be many. The slain of the Lord shall be many. So be getting your houses in order, man. Come back to these all statutes of commandments. Repent. Repent because the kingdom is now at hand. Repent and be converted. Come to this knowledge of truth. Recognize that you are a Hebrew Israelite from the various 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, which today are the so-called African Americans, so-called Hispanics, and so-called Native Americans. With that being said, I'm going to hit this scripture in the Apocrypha. Um, 2 Ezra, chapter 7, 2 Ezra, chapter 7, verse 1. And when I had made an end of speaking these words, there was sent unto me the angel which had been sent unto me the nights before. And he said unto me, Up, Ezra, and hear the words that I am come to tell thee. And I said, Speak on, my God. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in a wide place, that it may be deep and great. But put the case, the entrance were narrow and like a river. So paint the picture. We got the Pacific Ocean in his in his entirety. And then we got this small, small, um small river going in between it. You know what I'm saying? Verse 5, it says. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it? If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? Like um, like in certain in certain movies, in certain um, certain movies where they gotta go through the tight river or they gotta go through the tight um tributaries or whatever it's called. Like they sailing through the river in order to um like get into the ocean. You know what I'm saying? Like I know I know y'all know what I'm talking about. There's certain movies out there where they're going through this tight tight space river and then all of a sudden they burst through out into the sea type thing and it says um second Ezra chapter 7 verse 6 it says there is also another thing a city is built and set upon a broad field and it's full of good things talk that city is the kingdom of heaven a city is built the kingdom of heaven is set upon a broad field and it's full of good things everlasting life glorified bodies an end of sorrow and end of sin you know what I'm saying? Um, riches, glory, all that type of stuff. And it says, sec, uh, Second Ezra chapter seven verse seven, the entrance thereof is narrow, and set in a dangerous place to fall, like if it were there, were a fire on right hand, on the left a deep water, and one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could be but one man go there at once. What is that? The straight path, the difficult path. It says, it says, it says this place right here, again, and only one path between them both. So I can, let me go back. Second Ezra chapter seven verse seven. The entrance thereof is narrow, and it's set in a dangerous place to fall, difficult, like as as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water, and only one path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small. That there could be but one man go there at once. Meaning only one man can go through this path at a time. It's that is that small. And it's you got fire and water on one side. Fire and water on one side. What is that talking about? It's talking about the, the, the perils and dangers of the 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 process it takes and the um the transition between this world and into the righteous kingdom of heaven. It's gonna be perilous, man. Cause like I keep saying and, and iterating, we coming into some some dangerous times, for real, for real. And it says, verse nine: If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, talking about the kingdom of heaven, because the, na the the nation of Israel, uh, mainly the elect, is is gonna have that first dominion over the kingdom of heaven. If he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? What is that talking about? He says. How should he receive so lucky? If he never shall pass the danger set before it, if he never goes through these trials and tribulations, if he never um, 
if he never has to experience hardship, how is he gonna appreciate? How is he gonna appreciate and cherish and and uphold and take care of his blessing if he never goes to anything? Like they say all the time, man, you're gonna appreciate something much, much, much more is it if you work for it hard. You're gonna appreciate working for something hard. The reward of working for something hard than if it's given, if it's just given to you. You're gonna take care of it more. You're gonna cherish. You're gonna value it. And it says, and that's what the Hamashiach is saying. That it's a, it's a difficult, it's the straight gate. He says, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Because it's easy to go through that broad gate. It's easy. It's simple. It's nothing, it's nothing hard about it. It's not, it's, it's, it's easy saying you're a Christian. Because why? You can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. The Christian church tells you do whatever you want, your sins are forgiven. We as Hebrew Israelites tell you, keep the laws and statutes, the 613 laws of the Most High God. That's difficult to do, especially in the world we live in now. This uh, this wicked this wicked world. That's very hard to do. It's it's so hard to do that you can't even keep all all the 613 laws, statutes, and commandments. Why? This wicked world destroyed our temple. We ain't got a temple to sacrifice at. We can't even keep our judgments. We can't. And not saying. I want to, but we can't put people to death for what they do. Even though, even though it's righteous unto God. That's that's the judgment he gave. If you do this, is if you do a certain sin, it's worthy of death. We can't do that because we'll get locked up. Just just to give an example. And it says right uh second Ezra chapter seven verse ten. And let me clarify that. Because a lot of people out there are gonna say, Oh, Tori wanna kill somebody. No, I don't necessarily want to kill somebody. I just want righteous judgment to be judged. To be done, just like anybody else, who's who who's gonna be realistic? If something happens to them or something happens to their family member, um, some they're gonna want blood. If it depending on what the situation is, and just like in the Bible, depending on the situation is that sin is worthy of death. The verse ten it says, and I say it is so, Lord. Then say he unto me, even so is Israel's person, because for their sakes I made the world. And when Adam died, transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. Letting you know right there, man. One, that the kingdom of heaven is, is Israel's inheritance. Your inheritance. If you just wake up and, and, and just accept that, it, it's yours. It's yours for the taking. It's yours for the grabbing. But you got to work for it. You got to work for it and you got to rehearse the righteous acts and you got to be diligent in this thing. You got to be diligent in this thing. Um, yeah. I'm going to go to um, John chapter 4, verse 23. Another one of my favorite scriptures. It says, John chapter 4, verse, um, I'm going to go to 21. He says, Jesus said unto her, John chapter 4, verse 21, Jesus, Yahweh Shai, said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor ye at uh, Jerusalem worship the Father. What is that doing? First of all, it's, it's destroying the, the concept of the Trinity. First of all. And also, it's, it's, she, uh, the Hamashiach is prophesying, one, that the way of the truth would be hidden. And then two, um, what happened in 7 day AD where, where Jerusalem was um, destroyed and it caused the diaspora of the Jews, which are the southern kingdom, Levi, Benjamin, and Judah, it caused the diaspora of them and caused them to flee. And it goes on in 22, it says, Ye worship, ye uh, know not what? We know we worship for salvation is of the Jews. And now that we now that the, 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 um, the truth has been revealed, we know what we worship now. Us true men of the Lord, and hopefully I, I am on that number. I hope and pray that I am of the elect. And even if I'm not of the elect, it's I am satisfied in just the knowledge that people who look like me are going to inherit the kingdom of heaven and they're going to rule it. And all these other nations are going to get their judgment. And and, and finally, the so-called African-American man, so-called Hispanic, and so-called Native American man is going to get some justice. That's enough for me. I, I, 
I don't even have to make it into the kingdom of heaven. I don't, I don't have to have that first dominion. Just know, understanding and knowing what's going to happen, that's enough for me. And it says, John chapter 4, verse 23. But the hour cometh and now is. When the true worshipers, the true worshipers, us, us men of the world, us men of the Lord, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And peep this, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. And that destroys Christianity right there. Because they, they just have the spirit. They don't have the spirit and the truth. Over here, we have the spirit and the truth. And not only do we have the spirit and the truth, it's important to us to have that. We value it. We, we're adamant about having the spirit and the truth. Because why? That's what the Father wants. That's the, that's the standard that the Father has set. I don't care. And what, what people have to realize is God, the Most High God, nor His Son cares about your opinion. I'm sorry to be harsh, but He doesn't care about your opinion. He doesn't care about what you want. He cares about you if you're being righteous, but He doesn't care about what you think. I know it sounds harsh, but He's the Most High God. Come on now. He got he got he got better stuff to do than to be worried about what you, what you care about. Just to be honest, and it says twenty four, God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must. That word must is 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 like a requirement. It's a definitive commandment. If you want to do this, you have to do that. If you want to worship the the Father, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh you must worship Him in spirit and in truth. With that being said, uh, I think that's enough for today. Matter of fact, I'm gonna wrap it up. Wrap it up with with the with the with the conclusion. Cause I've grown I've grown very fond of the scripture. I'm very fond of it. Ecclesiastes chapter twelve verse um thirteen. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. With that being said, spirit and the truth. Spirit and truth. And narrow, 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 straight. Straight is the gate. Broad is the way to destruction. Remember that. With that being said, Shalom.